Hi, my name is Phil Zeltzman. I'm a board certified surgeon in Pennsylvania. And these are my discharge instructions for my TPLO patients. TPLO stands for tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, which is really a fancy expression to explain a, um, an advanced surgery to address a torn ACL. It's my number, is, number one surgery by very far. And I think it's fair to say that we have uh, good, good, very good results uh, with a proven system. There's also no question that the rules are very strict and strict rules lead to good results. We've done a TPLO on many thousands of um, patients. So hopefully you will trust the system, the system and you will get good results as well. The punchline is that my expect expectations are very high. I expect that 95% of my patients will get to 95% of normal, which is really high, but there's no miracles. It's by um, following strict rules that we get these results. Now, what follows is what I recommend to my clients for my patients. If you are not planning on having surgery with me, then I would recommend you follow the instructions from your surgeon, which will be likely different. So what's a TPLO? The goal is to flatten or lower an angle that is um, too steep at the top of the shin bone. So this is a fairly steep angle. This is a very steep angle and we flatten it by um, cutting the top part of the shin bone and then we turn it a specific amount based on measurements on your dog. And then once we have it where it should be, we hold both pieces of the bone with a metal plate and some screws. And then it takes two months for the bone to heal. And during those two months, you need to treat your dog like crystal. Um, during anesthesia, your dog will be monitored by a dedicated anesthesia nurse whose only job is to keep your dog safe. After surgery, we will pamper your dog and uh, make sure um, that we continue to monitor vitals and we'll make sure that he or she is um, kept warm and comfortable. Um, we, we do uh, provide a very large number of different uh, techniques to keep your, your dog comfortable. And that includes uh, medications by mouth, medications IV, uh, pain drugs directly in the IV fluid. So every, dro every drop, um, your pet gets a little bit of pain medication. We also inject um, pain medications directly into the joint, into the knee before surgery. At the end of the surgery, we'll inject a, a medication around the incision and it numbs the knee for up to three days. Um, sometimes we inject a joint lubricant inside the knee. That's usually in patients with uh, severe arthritis. Um, and then after surgery, we inject the, the rest of the pain medication in the knee. Then to go home, we send uh, pain medications and anti-inflammatory by mouth, and we'll send some or recommend some arthritis supplements uh, for life. And while we're on the topic of medications, we'll also send your dog home on antibiotics uh, by mouth after we give antibiotics IV. And in some cases, usually uh, based on your request, we will send home a mild sedative or tranquilizer just enough to take the edge off. After surgery, I will call you and I'll give you uh, more information about the surgery and the amount of arthritis. Um, like I just said, we'll provide two different joint supplements. One is a type of glucosamine. The other one is a type of fish oil. Um, the ones we recommend are um, a very, very high quality um, so that it actually makes a difference. Now there's no question that most, most dogs, like most people are completely discombobulated after anesthesia. Um, they're usually a much happier camper the next day, but we still can have uh, some of these signs that are called dysphoria uh, the day after surgery. And then eventually it, it resolves. Uh, it's, it's something that happens in people as well. You may have seen these funny videos 
with people who say all kinds of things that they don't even remember after the fact. The two secrets um, to our good results is um, two different things and only those that are allowed for the next two months. The first one is very strict confinement indoors and uh, very strictly controlled activity outdoors. So indoors, we uh, typically recommend a small room for most medium, large, and giant dogs. Um, and it can be very simple. It can be a laundry room, a dining room, an office, a bathroom, a walk-in closet, a sunroom, a mudroom. It's literally anything that's easy, ideally that's on the first floor, and that will have as few steps as possible going into, into the yard. If need be, you can block off part of a room or a room with a baby gate. Just make sure your dog um, can't jump over the top. Um, we do not recommend the family room or the TV room or the bedroom because however you think your dog is behaved or trained, um, if your dog gets on a piece of furniture and jumps, that could destroy the repair. So that's a big no-no. Um, just because your dog cannot leave that room for the next two months for any reason, whether you're awake or asleep, whether you're home or not, that doesn't mean that you can't spend as much time as you can with your dog doing things you normally would never do in that room. So that includes uh, calling people, texting, emailing, working, studying, reading, um, watching videos, napping, anything you can think of, um, do it with your dog and that'll make for a much happier recovery for you and your dog. The floor should be non-slippery ideally. Uh, you can use yoga mats. Um, you can also get um, an area rug or the cheapest piece of carpet you can find. The reason I say cheap is that if uh, it's filthy after two months, then you'll have no second thoughts about throwing it away. I typically don't recommend crates in big dogs. Um, I do in small patients, but the crate has to be large. It, ha it has to be, it has to be uh, large enough for a bed, food, water, and an area to walk around. So let's say, for example, for a Westie, the cage should be the size of a Great Dane. Now let's move on to outside activity. It should be on a short leash, so you control the activity, and with a sling. A sling, even though it can be bought, um, can be as simple as a towel that you roll and you slide under your dog's belly. So you'll have the leash in one hand, the sling in the other, and away you go. Um, unlike what is showed in that picture, the goal of the sling is not for you to help your dog or support or take weight off. That's a misconception, because if you take weight off, you're going to get stronger, which is lovely, but your dog is going to get weaker, and that defeats the purpose. So the sling should be loose um, at all times. Um, the only exception really is if you have steps or a slippery surface, but as soon as your dog has good footing on grass, for example, then um, the sling should be loose so that the only reason you would use it is to catch your dog um, in case of, of slipping or sliding. And of course, that's especially true in the wintertime when there's snow and ice. Um, in a male dog, the only time uh, you should remove the sling is three seconds before he pees. Otherwise, you're going to do a whole lot of laundry. So again, the sling should be loose 99% of the time, uh, but tight um, to provide help going up and down the steps. The walks outside should be limited to five minutes, enough to smell around, pee, poop, stretch your dog's legs, and then back in. That, however, can be as many times as needed. So three, five, seven times a day, that doesn't matter. Again, limited to five minutes. Um, there's a number of no-nos, which include uh, rough playing, running, uh, hanging out with other dogs, 
hiking. Uh, I don't even know what this dog is doing. Uh, flying is not allowed. Chasing squirrels and butterflies, um, playing with a frisbee, swimming, and chasing the cat. Steps are also uh, to be avoided. A whole flight, a flight of stairs is definitely not recommended. If you have a few steps on a deck, uh, that's perfectly fine. That's the only time you should um, take weight off and help your dog going down. And then again, uh, going back up on the way back to the room. Your dog will need to wear a lovely cone around his or her, his, his or her head, excuse me. And that should be 24 seven, no exception. Uh, including to eat and drink, including to walk outside, including um, uh, to sleep, even if you're right next to your dog. The number one complication we have is not related to surgery, it's related to licking. Uh, and unfortunately, a dog can turn a, an incision into a raw mess in a matter of seconds and remove a bunch of staples uh, and potentially can open the incision, which might require another surgery to stitch it back up. At worst, your dog can cause an infection that is so severe that antibiotics won't take care of it. And the only option we have is to go back to surgery under anesthesia, spending a whole bunch more money to remove the implants. Ironically, that again will require another cone to protect the new incision and more confinement because the bone without implants will be weaker for a while. So please trust me when I tell you the cone is your dog's best friend. That's only for two weeks, however. Um, I do recommend putting it back on for another three days after surgery. I'm sorry, after the staples come out. So this is what happens. This is a typical incision after a TPLO. There's usually 10 staples or less. We do cover it with a Band-Aid. It is not meant to replace the cone. It's only there to protect the incision from the environment. Now, the Band-Aid is human grade. It doesn't always stick very well to dog skin, even if it's um, shaved. So there's a small chance that it'll be useless and we'll take it out at the hospital. Um, but our hope is that it stays on for up to five days. Uh, and then use your judgment, you know, if it's soaked uh, with um, discharge or blood, or if it's halfway off, then remove it um, before that. Um, so after 14 days, you'll go back to your family vet uh, to remove the staples. Typically, the nurses will throw away the cone after two weeks because it'll be dirty or it might be damaged. So please don't let them do that. Keep the cone on and leave it on for another three days to protect the incision. So the reason is that after uh, the staples come out, it kind of tickles and most dogs will lick. That's the only thing they know um, how to do, how to, how to soothe um, the, the feeling. And the licking can turn a pretty incision into a mess again. So please keep it back on or put it back on for three more days. After that, use your judgment. If your dog leaves the incision alone, you're done. However, if there's um, additional licking, please put it back on. So again, the first appointment is two weeks after surgery to remove the staples. The second appointment is one month after surgery to make sure the bone is starting to heal. And the third appointment will be two months after surgery to make sure the bone has healed. Then your vet will email me the x-rays. Um, I'll send them a letter to tell them exactly what to do. So I'd like to show you what we look for. So this is an example of um, what happens right after surgery. There's a big step um, after we turn the top part of the bone. And after two months, you see that this um, um, area here has completely filled in with uh, bone and is now smooth. That's a view from the side. Um, on a view from the front, you can again see a big step here right after surgery. And then two months after surgery, the bone has completely filled in 
and now we have a solid shin bone. So when I receive the x-rays, my nurse or I will call you to go over the healing and to talk to you about the next step. After two months, the, um, the, the goal will be to progressively increase your dog's activity inside, and we'll do that over two months. And then we'll also increase the activity outside. And that is extremely simple. You'll just put your dog on a leash and you will walk longer and longer and longer to rebuild muscle. So to summarize everything I just told you, your dog is going to be in a cone for two weeks, in a room, hardly ever in a crate for two months, and then we'll do two months of rehab to get your dog um, back to normal life. So that's um, how I handle my TPLO patients. Uh, we will talk uh, right before surgery. I will call you and we'll go over any questions you may have. Um, I thank you for your trust and I thank you for your attention. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, sorry. I will include uh, all these links below um, this video so that uh, you can click directly on them. It'll be easier for you. And then you can um, find some more information about the, um, the different information related to TPLO arthritis and so on and so forth. Thank you again. Take care.